Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation that deals with primary key and foreign key when it comes to relational database. On the CPA exam, you are expected to know the difference between the primary key and the foreign key. Now, you might see something similar. You might see something different in terms of CPA simulation. This CPA exam simulation will help you understand what is a primary key, what is a foreign key, and how to use it. Now, matter of fact, in this, in this exercise, in this simulation, we're going to build the database from scratch. So some prerequisite information here is what is a primary key, what's a foreign key? And this is what we covered in the prior session. So if you don't know what the primary key and a foreign key is, I suggest you view the prior session to understand. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. You should read the simulation, see if you can answer the questions first, then play and see what you got. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. We have Farhat's team is developing a database system for Joe Pizzeria. So we are basically helping a local pizzeria. The team is collaborating with the accounting department to determine the data storage for the system. Farhat's team decides to categorize the data into the following tables. So we have four tables. One, customer order. Two, Detail, order details, three pizza, and four customers. So we have four, those are tables. Now within the tables, we're going to have fields and records, so on and so forth. We're going to help Farhat's team to assign the primary and the foreign key for each table. For, so for each table, we're going to have a primary key, foreign key, and other fields. So based on all this information that's given to us here, we're going to try to see which one is the primary key for a particular table. What's a primary key? A primary key is something that's going to identify this table uniquely, something that's unique to that table. Let's start with the customer because it's easier to understand when we are dealing with the customer. Well, a customer will have a first name, a last name, an address, an email address, a telephone number, payment method, so on and so forth. That's fine. But we need to find something unique. Well, will the address be a unique thing? No. You could have two customers like a brother and a sister and at the same address. You cannot have the address as unique. How about the name? Well, you could have two customers with the same first and last name. It could be from the same household, one junior, one senior. It could be a little bit confusing. So what can we do? Well, what we're going to do for the customer, we're going to create, we're going to create a customer ID. A customer ID will be unique. For example, 000157. Okay, that's the customer, 000157. So the customer ID will be the primary key, the primary key under the table customer. So basically we are done with the customer ID because the primary key is the, is the primary key for this table. What else we would include under the customer data? Well, do we include the order number? Not necessary, we're looking for customer information. Do we include the pizza name? No, customer phone, I would say yes, we're gonna include the customer phone. Are we going to include the customer name itself right here? Are we going to include the customer name? Sure, we will include the customer name. So we're going to include the customer phone. We said the customer phone will go under this table. The customer name, what else? Do we have anything else? Do we have an address? We have a customer address and also customer address. Okay, and customer phone. Now, is this the only thing that we can, that we need to include? We can include other things, emails, anything we want to do, we want to learn about this customer. Okay, so this is the customer table, and this makes sense. So any information about a customer, we have it here. And every customer is identified by a primary key, is called customer ID. Now notice, the customer table don't have any foreign keys. We only have one primary key, we don't have to have a foreign key. Now, after the customer, since we are a pizzeria, I mean, we can start with anything. We're going to start with the pizza. So we have a table for pizzas, because we're going to have many types of pizzas. We're going to have plain pizza, we're going to have pepperoni, sausage, vegetables, so on and so forth. So we're going to identify the pizza by a code. So each pizza will have its own code. 
And we're going to call this the primary code as the pizza code. So let's see here we have a pizza code. Let's take out the pizza code. Pizza code. So what do we need to know, learn about the pizza code? What, I'm sorry. What do we need to add to the pizza table? Well, now we, we determine the primary key. We need the pizza name. Is it pepperoni? Is it vegetable? So each pizza will have its own name, but it's identified by a code. Also, we want the unit price of that pizza, how much that pizza is, unit price. And anything else we think we want to collect about that pizza, whatever we want to do it, okay? So what we did is we used the pizza name, that's done. We used the unit price, that's done too. Unit price, that's done. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm building the tables. The next thing I'm going to look at is the customer order. So the customer is going to place an order, okay? Either online or they're going to come, come into the store. Maybe someone takes the order, a person takes the order, maybe not. Once a customer places an order, we're going to have an order number. And that order number is unique to that order. Well, we have an order number here. And this order number will be the primary key for the customer order. What else do we need to collect about the order? Well, we have the order date. When did the person place that order? That's two. What else are we going to include? Well, someone's going to place this order, right? Who's that someone? A customer, a customer. Now, what do we do? Do we include the customer name, address, phone number, blah, blah, blah? Not at all. What we're going to do, we're going to relate this table, this, ta this customer table. I'm going to take this customer table and use the customer ID as a foreign, foreign key in the customer order. So as we are placing the order, if the customer exists, you remember we had customer 0, 0, 0, 1, 5, 7. So if the customer already exists, we just put the number and it will populate. If the customer don't exist, we're going to add the customer to the database first and we'll assign a new number for them if they're a new customer other than 0, 0, 0, 1, 5, 7, and it will be included on the customer order. So notice here, the customer ID is a foreign key and you could have more than one foreign key within a table, but it happens to be a foreign key. What else do we need to do? Total price. We need to tell the customer on the order what's the total price. Now, how are we going to compute the total price? Just hold on on that total price. So this is what we need under the customer order. Now we're going to calculate or not calculate, populate the order details. Okay. So when someone places an order, well, we said there's an order, there's an order number. Well, the order number, it's going to go from this table to this table. Now listen to me carefully and don't panic here, okay? The order number will be a primary key and a foreign key. Just hold on. Hold on a second. How can I have two primary keys? That's not going to be the case. Also, under the order details, we're going to have the pizza. So notice here, we're going to have the pizza. The pizza code would also be a primary key and a foreign key. So what's the primary key for the order details? Are these two primary keys together? They are foreign keys, but together they form a primary key. Now, I'm not a database specialist. All what you need to know is you could have more than one primary key. Together, they will form a primary key. Two items that together form the primary key. But also, they are a foreign key too. Remember, they're coming from a different table. That's fine as well. Again, I'm not a database specialist, but don't panic. We're just trying to learn what's a primary key, what's a foreign key, in case you, you are faced with a multiple choice or a simulation. Now, what else do you need to know about the order detail is how many units, the, the quantity, the order quantity, how many units do we need? Now, how do we compute the quantity? Well, here's what's going to happen. Remember, this order detail table is bringing, let me, I'm going to change colors now, is bringing the following. It's bringing what? It's bringing the order number from here. Okay, that's, that's including, that's, that we have to include the total price. And the pizza... And the pizza table is bringing this pizza code from the other table, and it's bringing the quantity. I'm sorry, the price, not the quantity, the unit price. So we have the unit price. We have the quantity in this table. The unit price times the quantity, and we already have the total price coming from the order. The total price will be basically, you know, the unit from the pizza, how many pizzas they ordered, times the quantity of the order detail will give us the total price. So everything eventually, what I'm trying to say is this, under the order detail, if you really think of it, now let me just show, show you this like clearly. Under the order detail, we have, the, we have this table is included. How? Because this table is included in the order 
ID and the order ID is included here. So all this table, all the information in this table is included in the order detail, including the order date, the customer information, and the total price. All the information in this table, in this pizza table, also included in this table through this pizza code, the primary key as well. That's primary and foreign in the order details. And all of them together plus the quantity will give us the total price. And this is how we build the, the uh, this is how we populated the primary key and the foreign key. I hope this simulation or this exercise, again, will help you understand what do we mean by primary key, foreign key. Now, the question is, what is the reason for this primary key and foreign key? This is what I discussed in the prior session explaining what's the objective of relational database. So these tables are connected together. Why? Because the flat tables are not as good. There's many, many, many more advantages using relational database. This is what I discussed. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to help you differentiate between the primary key and the foreign key in order to do what? Do better on your CPA exam or whatever exam you are taking. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.